Question 4 wants a series of test tube reactions to figure out which is which of these solutions. Again, you've got to read the question carefully and notice that it wants you to describe the test and the observations, but it also, in this case, wanted equations. And, of course, if you missed the equations out, you lost a lot of marks. So, again, read the question really carefully. Usually, when you get questions like this, it doesn't ask for the equations. Um, but I just put them in because I think it's important for you to practice your ionic equations. So there's more than one sequence you can do these in, so you can basically figure out which ones are the ammonium compounds as opposed to the sodium compounds at the beginning, or you can do it at the end. But when you're doing the negative ion tests, you must do them in the right order. Um, that's really important. So let's look at one of the possible um, answers. Whenever you have questions like this, what you need to do is have a series of sort of eliminations. So once you've identified one of the substances, you don't test it anymore. And that, it, that needs to be clear in the way you write it down. Um, what I recommend is using a flow diagram to show the sequence of things you would do. You don't have to do that. Um, you can just write it out in, in, you know, in prose if you want, so long as it's clear what you're doing. But a flow diagram makes the logic clear and just makes it very easy to follow what the sequence is. So that's what I'm going to show you, but as I say, you don't absolutely have to do that. So let's choose to eliminate the ammonia compound, ammonium compounds first. You don't, as I say, you don't have to do that, you could do it at the end, but, but we'll choose to do it first. So the first test is that you warm with aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, so you don't need a lot of detail, but you do need the fact that you've got to heat it. Okay, you can't just add it because that won't work. And it's got to be aqueous. You don't just add the solid. So put enough detail down for it to be clearly correct. And what a lot of people didn't mention is that you test the vapour not the solution, because obviously the solution is bound to be alkaline because it's got sodium hydroxide in it, so there's no point testing that. You test the vapour with damp, um, either red litmus paper or universal indicator paper. Um, so that's the test, and there are two possible outcomes. You either get um, no colour change in the paper or you get that the paper turns blue. And the paper turns blue if you have an ammonium compound because that produces ammonia which is an alkaline gas. So if the paper turns blue that means that you have an NH4 plus compound. So in other words, ammonium bromide or ammonium chloride. And the equation for that is NH4 plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives you ammonia gas, NH3 plus steam or um, just liquid water. It depends how strongly you heat it. But um, the important thing is that the ammonia is produced as a gas and that's what produces the colour change. So that's the test, that's the observation, that's the conclusion, that's the equation, and that's what you need to have uh, documented. So that isn't the end of that story, of course, because there are two ammonium compounds. So those ones you have to do another test on. And you can see they're both halides. So you don't need to test for carbonates and sulfates because we know they're not those. If they're ammonium compounds, they've got to be either the bromide or the chloride. So you just add silver nitrate. But again, it must be a solution. So you should put aqueous or say solution. Um, if you can't remember the formula, write the name down. Don't guess what the formula of the compound is. Um, and that will give you two possible outcomes which are that you'll either get a white precipitate if it's the chloride or you'll get a cream precipitate if it's the bromide. We haven't got an iodide so there's no point talking about the yellow precipitate you'd get from an iodide. So you've either got 
a white or cream precipitate um, and if it's white that means that you've got chloride ions and out of these solutions that means you've got NH4Cl because you know it was an ammonium compound and you've now got the chloride so that one has been identified and the green one is bromide um, and therefore that's ammonium bromide so that's two of your solutions identified and just make it very clear like that and again it wants equations so very simple equations here just Ag plus aqueous meets Cl minus aqueous to give you AgCl solid and the analogous thing for the bromide which obviously is, is, is just got Br minus instead of Cl minus there so that's those two dealt with now we have to move over to this side and say well what if we didn't get any response with the ammonium ion test well that tells you it's the sodium ions so that one means that it's not an NH4 plus compound so what do you do next well you think what have we got we've got a carbonate we've got a sulfate and we've got a bromide so we've got to do the carbonate test remember that's the sequence you have to do the carbonate test first otherwise you're going to get false positives in the later tests so the carbonate test is that you add um, uh, nitric acid aqueous and this has got to be a fresh sample really because we've already reacted this one with the sodium hydroxide to a fresh sample and two possible outcomes you either get uh, no reaction or you get fizzing or you can say effervescence or bubbling but however whatever word you use that's what you're looking for and that tells you that it's a carbonate if you get fizzing and um, in this particular context the carbonate you've got is sodium carbonate so that one is then correctly identified and again it wants the equation so carbonate plus 2H plus from the nitric acid gives you carbon dioxide hence the fizzing plus H2O is the ionic equation so you need to get good at these ionic equations and these ones I mean you can always fig figure them out but these ones really uh, you should be trying to get to the point where you know them so that you can just write them down if there's no reaction obviously it means it's not a carbonate so then you've got just two candidates left which are the sodium bromide and the sodium sulfate so you do the sulfate test which means that you add barium nitrate aqueous and again two possible outcomes um, you could get a white precipitate is what you're looking for if it's a sulfate so if you get the white precipitate that confirms sulfate and in this case it's therefore sodium sulfate okay so we got that identified and the equation of that again is a really simple one just like this one positive ion meets negative ion and they stick together and it's the same here Ba2 plus barium ions meet SO42 minus sulfate ions and barium sulfate precipitates out and of course the other solution is sodium bromide and that's not going to react so you just get no reaction means it's not a sulfate and therefore because it's the only one left in the game it must be the bromide 
so that one is NABR and that's it you don't need to do anymore you don't need to do a test at that point to confirm it's bromide because it's the only one left in the game you could if you wanted to but you don't need to you've now successfully identified all of them so that's the kind of scheme that you want and, and flow diagrams as I say absolutely not obligatory but they are a very useful way to represent those things